Hey guys, um, I thought I'd start this morning by introducing you to Adobe InDesign and talking a little bit about how you could use InDesign to create your portfolios. Uh, this is going to be specifically relevant or especially relevant for students who are completing a, a subject that requires a major project in year 11 and 12, such as design and technology or industrial technology or textiles and design, visual arts and so on. Um, a lot of this will apply. In the sample that I'm giving, I'll be generating a portfolio in the way that's required for an industrial technology student, but the same skills as far as using Adobe InDesign will apply. Now, the first thing that you guys will need to do if you haven't already done that is make sure that you've actually got Adobe InDesign installed on your computer. You all, as students of uh, New South Wales Public School, have access to Adobe InDesign for free. So what you need to do in order to get that is to Google, what I normally do is Google the phrase Adobe Creative Cloud Desktop App Download or some variant of that, but this is the specific thing that I usually search to make it easy for myself. Search for that, choose the first result that is not an ad or the second one, both will work. And then the what it says here, this is a help page that explains how to download it. And the first thing is go to the Creative Cloud website, your download begins. You click on that. And you're on a web page now where Adobe Creative Cloud just downloaded straight away. Um, and that's it. So you would you would install this on your computer and at some point during that process you'll be asked to log in. I'm just going to cancel mine because I've already got it installed and that might stuff things up. Um, but you'll install it and at some point during that install you'll be asked to log in and when you get to the login screen you should just choose your uh, enter your Department of Education school login email address and password and um, because you've got access you will then when you log in to Creative Cloud using those details you have access to all of the Adobe softwares so which which will look something like this. Now what you'll need to do then is to scroll down here, find InDesign and click install, which I've already done. And so mine's here and it doesn't have install, it has open. So these are the ones that I currently have installed. I would suggest in also uh, to, to help you manage your portfolios that you should also probably install Photoshop and maybe even Adobe Illustrator. Uh, you might use these from time to time. And when we export out of InDesign, it's going to be uh, in a PDF format and the best PDF viewer which is much better than the dodgy free version or much better than viewing PDFs within your web browser is Acrobat. So I would suggest installing those four but to get us started you'll just need Adobe InDesign. So if we open up InDesign I'll give you a bit of an introduction to what it looks like, um, what the user interface is, how you create new files and stuff like that and then I'll probably end this as end this first video which is just meant to be a bit of an introduction uh, into getting the software and what the UI looks like and then I'll make a second video where we can actually start using the tools uh, to create a portfolio. Just give it a second to load up. You can see it takes takes a minute, even on a decent computer. It takes a little while to open up. It's a big program. There's a lot of functionality. Now, when it loads up, you get this thing here, this What's New pop-up box, which you can, I don't care whether you skip through this or you just hit the X to close it. Then you get faced with a screen that looks like this. Um, this is just the, the screen that pops up when you don't have a file open. And you see some of these new suggested formats here, or you could choose open to open an existing file, or over here you could go create new. And when you choose create new, you get this window here with uh, some suggested options and things. Now there are a whole bunch of templates that you could choose from. Up the top you could choose between print templates. And these are templates for things that will be printed out such as a portfolio, which you're eventually going to print out on an A4 or A3 piece of paper. Um, or you could choose a preset for a web-based document if you're planning on designing a, a website layout or a presentation uh, that you're doing for class and you know that that presentation is going to be shown on a, a projector, an HD projector that has a resolution of this particular number or, or whatever. If you don't want to use one of those presets, you can create your own stuff over here. The default unit is pickers, which is just a, uh, an on-screen design unit. You could change that to millimeters or to pixels or to whatever makes more sense for you. Um, I prefer to use millimeters because I know the page sizes. And you can enter the size of the pages here. In this case, I'm just going to use the A4 size. <coughs> 
which I know is 210 by 294, I think. To uh, forgotten the size of A4, which is actually a good opportunity here for us to learn something new. If you Google the phrase ISO paper sizes, you see them here. Now what's really interesting about paper sizes, which is relevant here, if you check out this little diagram, you can see they're all relevant. If you can remember any one of these, you can remember all of them. So here's A4 for example, and A4 is 210 by 297. I was right. Now then to get the size of an A3 page, the height of your A4 page is the same as the width of the A3 page and the other dimension is doubled. That's a little bit confusing but if you analyze this chart you'll, you'll start to make sense of that. So 210 by 297 I was close, 294. 297 is the A4 page size. Now you can choose here whether you want that to be landscape or portrait and you do need to think about that in the context of your portfolio. What format do you want it to be in, landscape or portrait? You've got to think about that now. It's a lot harder to change that because you're going to be designing your layout here. How many pages you want? Now if you've done A4, your maximum for design and technology and industrial technology is 80 A4 pages for a year 12 HSC major portfolio. But you don't need you can add pages later. So in order to make your documents smaller and more manageable, I'd suggest by starting, I'd suggest to start with something like 10. Facing pages will allow you to create a document where there's a uh, you know a left page and a right page, and you're turning the pages, and it lets you edit both sides of that spread, if you like, and that'll make more sense in a minute when I've got it on the screen and we're working with it. Um, for this case, I'm going to leave that ticked because I know how I'm going to lay my portfolio out in a folder where I'm going to have you know, a left page and a right page and I think that will be nicer. If you prefer to just have single pages, uh, then you would untick that and that, again, that will make more sense in a minute. Columns, we can edit this later, but I would suggest working with at least three columns. A column gutter is the width between the, um, the columns. I like to use rounded numbers, I don't like the default four point blah 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 blah. And the margins obviously are all the way around the outside of your thing. I'm just going to leave the default except the I like rounded numbers so I might go with 12. I'd suggest going with anything over 10 millimeters as a minimum so that you don't have any issues when you get to printing. And bleed and slug we can just ignore for this stage that's more relevant if you're doing multimedia or you're creating some advanced print design documents. We hit create. Okay. Now here's the first page of my document. There's a little welcome pop-up, which I can say go away to. Now this is what the user interface looks like. If it looks different to that, what I'd suggest you do is to come up to the very top right here where it says essentials or yours might say something else, but there's a little drop down box here. This is where you can change preset user interface layouts. Now I would suggest you either choose essentials or essentials classic, one of those two. I'm going to roll with Essentials Classic for now. Um, some of you may have a mode here that's developed for using InDesign on a tablet, so things might look a little bit different. So I'd just suggest making sure you've got one of those two selected. And from there, the rest of this information that I'm about to roll out will apply. On the left hand side, you can see your toolbar where there are some tools that you can access. I prefer to use this in a two column mode just because I find it faster and also that's just how I learn InDesign. So at the top of that toolbar there's a little sort of fast forward icon that just changes your toolbar to a two column thing. I don't care whether you do that or not but I prefer it in that mode. The only other thing that I want to look at now in this particular video is if you go here to pages it opens up this little pages tab and you can see here a mini thumbnail version of what your document looks like. If you, if you zoom out, I'm doing that by holding alt and scrolling on my mouse and now I'm letting go of alt and obviously scrolling just to scroll up and down. You can see that that's how my pages are laid out. Now what I've got here, this is the front cover of my document, the title page if you like. Now if you imagine this was a book that you were holding and you grabbed that front cover and you turned the page, this page here would be the back of that page. So this is the inside of the front cover and then this is obviously what you might call page one, often you might find a contents page here or something like that. It's the right hand side of the first spread and then that continues. So this page is the back of that page 
and so on. And then all the way down the bottom, this page here, which is the back of that page, would be your back cover. Now, in the, in the context of a portfolio, you may not necessarily use that. Now, there's a rule I know that uh, you're only supposed to print on one side of the paper in industrial technology and design and technology portfolios. So when you print this, if you set out your InDesign document like this with facing pages, when you print it, it's important to not actually print that as a double-sided thing. You could print this on single-sided pieces of paper, and then if you use a, a display folder with sleeves, you could put the pages back-to-back -back in a sleeve, and that's acceptable. Alternatively, if you're planning on having your portfolio printed and bound, then you would just want to use single pages which are bound down the left hand side and you may decide to not use facing pages spreads. Now if you've already created this document and you want to change that, I believe you can come to File, Document Setup and you can actually untick facing pages and then when you hit OK it'll change your document so now you've just got a series of single pages. Okay, now that's all I wanted to do to introduce you to InDesign and a basic sort of understanding of the toolbar and some of the stuff over here with regard to the pages pop up. What I'm going to do now is I'll stop this video before it hits 12 minutes and I'll move on to a next video where we can start to actually create some content and learn how to use the tools in InDesign. See you then.